Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, depending on whatever time frame and time zones you are guys you guys are based in. I am based in London, so good afternoon from myself. And welcome to our series of master classes, which in which we discuss several different topics, such as we focus particularly on individual stocks. And then we do take out zoom, zoom, kind of zoom out of this, and then we focus on the bigger macro pictures and focusing on indices as well. In addition, we also look at Bitcoin and trading oil, trading gold. So these are kind of some of the topics that we cover. In addition, what we also have is we cover the ongoing development in, the in, in terms of a geopolitical crisis, the fear of recession, and of course, the higher interest rate environment. So today, what we'll be focusing on, we'll be focusing mainly on stocks in the light of the US earnings. We have had pretty okay earnings from the US banking sector, but one of the leading Wall Street giant, Goldman Sachs, failed to impress its investors and the stock tanked yesterday. But when we look at its competitors, such as Morgan Stanley, it did produce very, very healthy numbers on the wealth management side. And that boosted the stock price on the on that particular side. So, you know, we have very much of this mixed reaction coming from the market because obviously every single day we see a lot of job losses news. Nonetheless, let's begin and then we'll be focusing on large number of stocks and then sharing the full agenda with you guys very shortly. Uh, so <clears throat> before we begin, a bit about myself. My name is Naeem Aslam. I work as a chief analyst for our trade and I come with a wealth of over 15 years of trading experience. During this time period, I have worked as a hedge fund trader for Bank of New York Mellon and as an equity trader with Bank of America. Many of you may have seen me as a regular guest on CNBC, Bloomberg, and a few other media channels. Now, speaking of media channels, here are our social media handles, and I do recommend you guys to follow us there as we do share important information throughout the day. And of course, the recording of this particular webinar will also be available on our YouTube channel. Now, something very important I wanted to discuss with you, and that is the risk warnings and disclosure. That means nothing can be perceived as an advice. This is purely an education-based series. If you have any particular questions, of course, you can contact me. But if you're looking for an advice, we would recommend you guys to go to, a, to and speak to your own financial advisors who will have much better information about yourselves. Now, the last and the final announcement before we begin is about Evertrade's unique technology called Everprotect which is a revolutionary one-click risk management tool available on Evertrade WebTrader and Evertrade Go Up. With Everprotect, you can purchase protection against loss for a defined period after opening a position. If the position ends and you have an open position that is losing, Evertrade will reimburse the loss directly into the trading accounts. The only cost is the Everprotect fee itself. Now, I hope you guys are ready, so let's begin with the agenda. Now, as always, the first thing the, and the most important thing before we start looking into micro sort of things at the micro level, what's quite important is to look at things on a bigger level and then see what does that really entail. Meaning, is the overall momentum in the market is to the upside, or is the overall momentum in the market is to the downside? Where are the fundamentals sitting in terms of the market price action? And what does that entail uh, for our strategy? And more importantly, how is the sentiment in the market? Are we, do we have a more positive sentiment in the market? 
market meaning traders are more willing to take bets to the upside or do we have a risk of sentiment among investors and traders meaning they are more concerned about the, the price action and they believe that the path of the least resistance is more skewed to the downside so we will do that by looking at the overall indices and we will look at the sectors so we'll do some sort of a sector analysis and then we're going to be focusing on specific stocks what i will be focusing mostly and the more importantly is going to be on uh, tech stocks because obviously we have seen a substantial rally in terms of tech stocks if you look at the nasdaq the Nasdaq 100 index, you see that the Nasdaq 100 index is moving to the upside and it has seemed pretty decent gains over the last number of weeks. Now the question really is, will we see this rally continuing to move to the upside or will we see a retracement? And that means if there is a retracement, could that be an opportunity or is this rally is just going to fizzle out and we are going to see tech stocks again tanking to the downside now before i get into that well, well let's go over the first one and that is the measuring indices now what i'm going to do is i'm going to briefly bring my mt5 platform and then we're going to look at the overall direction of the indices over here so when we look at the overall direction of the indices in terms of the S&P 500 index, we need to see where is the highest high on the chart, where is the lowest low on the chart, and this is the higher low, this is the lowest low, and where are the recent lows in terms of the price action as well, and of course, where is the price currently? This kind of gives us the direction. Now we know that the direction of the stock is very very much skewed to the upside because we have two lower highs, uh, uh, sorry, two, uh, two higher lows. And that confirms to us that the price action is more skewed to the upside than anything else. But at the same time, if we look at this high and we look at this high and then we focus on this particular high, we cannot be 100% confident that the bulls are in control of the price because only recently we did see the price moving above the previous high which was over here but now we are seeing some sort of a patterns forming in the price action which are indicating to us that the upside rally is kind of fading now if course if the rally for the s p 500 index is about to fail and it's about to lose its momentum then that means that we've got to be very very careful on individual stocks about especially going on long so our possibilities are or our potential opportunities are to short some of the stocks or secondly wait and then let the price valuation comes to a point where it would make more sense as we've discussed over here the important support zone now how to pick up an important support zone how to see if that is a really remarkable resistance zone the, the, the general approach that we use over here is with respect to the moving averages when the price begins to trade below the 50 day simple moving average and this over here sorry this over here in purple line is your 50 day simple moving average when the price begins to trade below the 50 day simple moving average we know that pretty much with a lot of certainty that the prices are likely to further move to the upside but when the prices continue to trade above the 50-day simple moving average we know that it is bulls who have actually taken control of the price action and we are likely to see more further highs with that respect so these are the most important things in terms of the price action in determining that. Now, currently, what do you think where the price is trading? Do you think the price is trading above the 50 day simple moving average? Or do you think the price is trading below the 50 day simple moving average? That's a question for everyone. It's a very simple question. And the question is, are we trading above the 50-day simple moving average or are we trading below the simple moving average? 
Exactly. Thank you, Amir. So we are trading above the simple moving average. Now, something which is also quite important in measuring the strength of the uh, of the overall rally is to point out where your current price action is. We know this is where the current price action is. Mark where is the highest high on that time frame or on the chart. Mark where is the lowest low on that time frame. Now, see the price with respect to the higher highs and with respect to higher highs where the price is really trading. So you could say potentially we are trading very much near the 50% sort of a price level. So that means that the 50 S&P 500 index has recovered, but the rally hasn't been across the board. And that means that there is still some weakness in the sector when it comes to the S&P 500 index. OK, now. What we're going to do is we're going to switch our uh, our board to another particular asset class, and that is your Bitcoin, and then see how the price sort of performs over there. Now, with respect to Bitcoin, we know a few fundamentals have changed. And then what are those fundamentals? Those fundamentals are we have less bad players in the market as of today in comparison to few months ago, a few weeks ago. So that is certainly an encouraging sign. Secondly, what we do know with respect to Bitcoin really is that regulators are very much honing and they're trying to bring more regulation, they're trying to punish bad players, which is really good for the environment. So these particular factors have actually helped the sentiment in the last number of days. And then this is the reason that we're seeing this Bitcoin price is moving to the upside. Now, you may be wondering that why am I covering Bitcoin, especially when we are talking about the stocks? The reason is Bitcoin has a very, very close correlation with the stock market these days. When Bitcoin moves to the upside, we also see the other uh, stock market moving to the upside as well. Now, what about the tech? Because tech is the most important one. Now, that which what is right in front of you is the NASDAQ 100 index. The NASDAQ 100 index has seen tremendous amount of strength coming back into, uh, into uh, in, in here as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit from the current position, OK? And I'm going to see where the price is trading uh, in the overall direction. Now, the overall direction of the trend, when we see it on the daily time frame, is it becomes clear that this is the top of the price action. And this over here was somewhere at the bottom of this particular price action. And we have started to move higher, and then currently we are trading over here. So there is plenty of move in relation to the NASDAQ index to move to the upside. So that means that the recovery that we're seeing in the, in the NASDAQ index is, is very realistic. And it is in so much realistic in a way that, um, you know, the, the traders are not fully confident that if it can really continue in the same manner that it has previously. So that means that when it comes to the NASDAQ stocks, when it comes to the and, uh, uh, the, the UK, UK Tech 100 stocks, traders must have some sort of a cautionary um, approach to, to come to this particular market because it could actually make you bleed very, very quickly. When we look at it with respect to the chain, this is your higher high on the chart. This is the lower low into the chart. And then this is sort of a current lows. So we are trading near the low of the chart and we are more likely to move to the downside rather than to the upside. So the tech stocks are very much screaming for um, attention because when we look at the you know as, uh, the, the Alibaba stock, we will see what we will see is that Alibaba's stock has increased more than 30% a year to date, and then really makes you think that maybe you should be doing something in relation to that. But again, make no mistake, the overall strength of the Nasdaq index is index is still quite weak and it still isn't there where it's supposed to be, as you can see from the chart in front of you. Now, 
What about the Dow Jones Industrial Average before, and that's the last one before we go into our detailed analysis. How's the Dow Jones Industrial Average trading? Now let me switch the time frame once again and see what the um, NASDAQ is going to tell us. Okay, so I'm just going to switch this one right over here. So this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So again, what we're going to do is this represents your industrial stocks in the market. We're going to kind of zoom out. And then this is the highest high. This is the lower high over here on this particular time frame. Price is trading right over here. It is trading kind of very, very close to its all-time high. And that means that we are likely to see this particular rally moving to the upside and we are are likely to see further gains really taking place in respect to the NASDAQ index, okay? So NASDAQ, which we discussed previously, you've got to be, uh, sorry, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which we discussed uh, just a moment ago, that yes, it is still is a, is, a, is a strong index, could actually see some serious strength coming by, and that could take the index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, back towards its all-time highs for some of the ingredients. So that is something that we need to pay attention to. Now, let's go on to the important aspect of this particular webinar, and that is looking at individual stocks. So we will begin the conversation by picking up one of the important stocks that has made quite a lot of noise this particular week. Does anyone know which particular stock is which has made quite a lot of noise? Yes, Goldman Sachs, you are right, but I am not focusing on Goldman Sachs right now. I'm going to be focusing on the tech stocks to begin with, and I'm going to look at Alibaba. Uh, on the daily time frame. So you could see on the daily time frame, Alibaba is trading at 115. We are looking for a next resistance to sort of approach at 122. And after that, we have this massive, massive uh, sell off in the market, uh, which pushed the prices to the downside for this particular stock, Alibaba. And that was like when planes were getting worried about traffic coming back. But now that we have traffic come back, so we do see remarkable sort of a recovery in Alibaba's stock, which is pushing the, the stock price higher. So the question really is that how far can it really go and where are the opportunities? Now, how far can it go? the first immediate resistance that comes to mind is right over here and the second resistance zone that we are will be focusing on in terms of the price action is going to be right over here so 133 to 137 is an area of an interest when it comes to alibaba when the price will get here we are likely to see some retracement coming back so do not expect expect anything uh, any, any time before but for the time being we are expecting this particular rally for Alibaba to continue to move to the upside now what about another tech stock which will be announcing its earnings you know very very soon as well and that is Amazon Amazon's price action is still very much trading towards the lows of this over here back in February 2020. The price has only recovered a teeny tiny bit from that price point from 80 to 95. It's not very, it's not a remarkable recovery, but nonetheless, it is a recovery and it is a price point which need, demands your attention. Now, what do we mean by that? The price has moved above the 50 day simple moving average on the daily time frame, which is certainly a positive aspect, which means that the bulls are actually taking control of the price. But the overall price action states that the prices are actually oversold and we could potentially see the rally coming. So where is the immediate support zone? The immediate support zone is going to be just below the new uh, support zone that the price has formed right over here. Now, because these are support zones, so we're going to change the color for these particular lines from red 
to green over here and then I'm going to do the same over here as well change the color from red to green to differentiate between basically resistance and support zones and the second important aspect of that one is where the 50 day simple moving average is trading right now the 50 day simple moving average is trading below the current price if the price continues to stay above the 50 day simple moving average we will have a bigger odds for prices crossing above the 100 and prices crossing above the 200 day simple moving averages which are right over here this is 200 this is the 100 so we could see a rally coming back but the resistance is at 133 to 137 sort of a price level when we look at another stock which is really going to be making quite a lot of noise in the coming week when the tech earnings will begin is apple Apple, as you can see on the chart, is still sitting very, very low on the curve. In fact, it has fallen pretty much below the 136 sort of price level and could threaten to break 120 very soon again. And that really puts a lot of pressure on it. Now, earlier today, we had the UK's CPI number data coming out, and it did increase the bets that the Bank of England will increase its interest rate more aggressively, okay? Sorry, I've just gone a little bit off, top, uh, off topic over here. <clears throat> so, Apple, Apple that we are really looking at over here, I don't know, I think I started to look at something else over there. So again, so Apple will, will be very much influenced with, with respect to the interest rate. That's what I wanted to say. And today we had the CPI data in the United Kingdom and then the CPI data was saying to us that the inflation is still high. So that means that Apple stock is not going to be very favorable. We have inflation data coming in the United States coming off its 40 years high, and that means that okay, cost of living crisis is coming under control to some extent. So that kind of um, puts Apple in a good picture. But overall, when we look at the price action and when we look at the way the price is trading currently, we can see one thing, and that is the price is trading below the 50, the price is trading below the 100, the price is trading below the 200 day simple moving averages as well. We have seen a rally coming when it comes to the Apple stock in the most recent days because, you know, the, uh, let me just bring the pen back. This is the highest high on the point. This is the lower point or more recently. And this particular low is lower than this particular low and it is in line with this one. So it is this area of support right over here, which is kind of providing support for Apple prices but in order to break it to the upside in order to have a confidence we need to see the prices breaking above the 50 day simple moving average only that will confirm to us that yes things are becoming immensely hunky and hunky dory for the for the for the tech sector and then yes the rally is here but so far Apple is not confirming to us that yes, you know, the, the things have changed and we're going to see pretty good, decent things. Now, the last uh, tech stock that I wanted to focus on is your meta, or also known as Facebook stock. The Facebook stock obviously has been absolutely dumped by pretty much everyone on the market, being punished very, very badly, because this being the highest high on the chart, this become being the lower, and then this is much lower than the previous one, now the price has started to move to the upside the price has crossed above the 50 day simple moving average which is positive the price has closed above the 50 100 day simple moving average the price is closing above the it could be closing above the 200 day simple moving average so it has already closed above the 50 could be closing above the 100 and then which would increase the possibility of the price closing above the 200 day simple moving average but overall when we look at the price action for facebook high and then this is low that low was tested right over here again failed this is lower low so we could potentially see some sort of a rich, uh, some sort of um, bounce back coming back in the price but the rsi is very much 
indicating to us that we could potentially be seeing further retracement than anything else. And then this is what you need to pay attention to the most. Now, one more tech stock that I wanted to do before I wanted to say goodbye to the to the growth stock, oh, sorry, to the tech stock is of course Google. Google's prices have also been quite interesting because the company has been cutting costs and so on and so forth. So what we are really seeing in terms of the Google price really over here is the price has come off its highs. It has come off its highs by, by a large margin. How? So uh, let me show you how so. So because the university has come out of its way to do this. So this is... Let me just bring out the pen. So this is where the price is trading. This is where the high was. So this is the previous high and lows. So price has come into this area. Now it is trying to break to the upside in terms of its, you know, <clears throat> your 50 day simple moving average. If we do see a breakout, that would be very, very positive because that, that would mean that the price will challenge the 100 day simple moving average very soon as well. But if we do not break above the 50 day simple moving average, we are likely to move to the downside and the area of interest is really going to be right over here near the 80, 68 sort of a price level. The immediate resistance in terms of the price action really is that we move these ones from these particular levels to this over here. So right over here. So this is our resistance. This is our support. This is our potential strong support. So we could see the prices sort of moving in that direction. Now, what I want to do is I wanted to bring uh, some tech stocks over here. So we will bring the conversation with, first of all, is with Citigroup because Citigroup is going to be quite an, is, is an interesting one. Then the company did produce a decent numbers. And now the question really is how the stock is very much performing from there onwards. How much of a strength we have seen? Will we continue to see further strength? Will we see more higher highs in terms of the Citigroup's price? Or where are we heading with respect to Citigroup's price? Now the chart is your daily chart. I'm going to zoom in, in a little bit. And when we zoom in a little bit, what we see is some important things. Here are those important things. Your higher high, higher side, your lower low, the price making another lower low, then price coming into this particular action, dipping over here, price taking some retracement around this particular price level, uh, and Citigroup could potentially see further retracement around this one, around 53 sort of a price level as well. So Citigroup has cleared three important hurdles. That is the 50, 100, and the 200 day simple moving average. Now Citigroup could see further reaction. It could further move to the upside if the risk on sentiment continues. And we could see the price challenging that 55 sort of a price level. And then from there onwards, we could be looking at 68 sort of a price level for the price to go. From, from here onwards. But one thing which is quite important to note is the RSI is showing that the prices are extremely overbought and that means retracement is highly, highly likely. Right guys, this is all the time that we have. So we've done mostly tech stocks which will be producing their earnings next week or, uh, and uh, we've discussed some of the important levels. Do recommend you guys to watch the video again on our YouTube channel. In the meantime, stay safe and we will see you guys soon.